Hey guys, it's Tom Box here. Thanks for tuning into MST.TV, where today is Lazy Thursday and I want to freshen up the content for you guys. Rather than constantly talk about the meta, I want to kind of put your sights farther into the future into Legacy of the Duelist Link Evolution. Well, mainly the product of the promo cards rather than the game itself. I have the game itself on my Switch. It's quite fun, but there's so much clicking involved. I'll probably do a review in the future, but maybe that's for another Lazy Thursday. Now, for today's video, we're going to look at the promo of Microcoder, Sina Codec, and Proglio. Are these cards really good? Do you need three copies of each? And do you guys want to learn how to U-board using Code Talkers against your opponent? Well, this is the video for you, so definitely give it a thumbs up if you're going to enjoy learning this. I guess fun deck thing and uh, don't forget if you guys want to help support this channel check out the patreon link down in the description below every bit of support helps I want to thank all of you guys for supporting me on patreon you're making me a lot happier that's for sure and it's really helping me out and for those of you guys who can't really do that but they want to get something else in it well something else to show your support check out this green screen technology cloaking field center it's just shining green, but this is my 2019 field center with the Kaiba Yugi. It is full foil in the front, and this is what it looks like in the back, so that's why there's that photo before. You guys can acquire these down in the link in the description below. Uh, they are all drawn by me, it's also signed by me, so it's all quite fun and good. And let's jump into this video. If you plan on playing a Cybers Code Talker based strategy in the near future, Unfortunately for you, you need to acquire three copies of Microcoder and three copies of the Synet Codec. Even Konami finds a way to dent the wallets of those who play casually. I mean, I don't think the strategy is that strong. Sure, you get to perform a U-board, but this is one of the more gentle U-boards that are a bit easier to break and not as protected as the ones performed with Nightmare Monsters. Definitely not the same for sure and definitely doesn't have the similar impact. It's still very fun to do, which is why I'm still going to show it to you guys. And it's quite like ingenious of how the whole synergy works. So what's so special about the two cards, Sinet Codec and Microcoder? Well, Sinet Codec is it's like a black whirlwind for whenever you summon out a code talker you get to add a cyber monster from your deck with a matching attribute then you can add each attribute once per turn and once you do add that one attribute you can still search it by other means it just means you cannot uh search it through sign codec anymore and also you're locked into special summoning only cyber monster out of your extra deck for the rest of the turn so there is a little bit of a limitation whenever you do this but that's okay why? Because, well, most of these Code Talker monsters, they have different attributes for each one. You have Trans Code Talker, I believe that one's Earth. You have X Code Talker, that's Wind. You have Inverse Code Talker, I think that one's Light. There's just so many different Code Talkers and you can use it to your advantage to just search out like three or four cards in that one turn and that's how you perform U-Board. Well, what about Micro Coder? What's so special about this guy? Uh, this guy lets you search a code, a uh, side net card from your deck to your hand when you use it to uh, go into a code talker but on top of that i guess microcoder code generator and the code radiator these three monsters i guess most of these are still technically ocg cards all three of these you can go into uh, code talker monsters as link material from your hand now if they're done on the field as a field material they have an extended effect but if you do it from your hand they still have a basic effect that triggers because of how they were used if you use of course microcoder you could add a signet card if you do from the field you can add a signet card or you can add a level 4 lower cyber monster what about code generator i believe he acts as a foolish burial which usually throws in a dot scaper which gives you a free summon a free body what about code radiator it basically lets you negate and zero out the attack of a monster on your opponent's side of the field but if you do on the field you get to do it to two monsters which is why i'm saying it gets an extended effect rather than just the, the typical one so what's so special about these guys well that's what they are they're just really quick and all these monsters they're all different attributes so that's the part of the strategy and that's why the whole future of code talkers rely on these monsters and this this particular spell and uh, that's why they're going to be very pricey. Is it fun to play? Yeah, it's pretty fun. I tried it online, but to give you my honest review about them, the board is still not completely unbreakable. It's it's very much breakable, and it's a little to me as a U board, it's a bit underwhelming. And I'll show you why right now. 
Okay, so here's a preview of the deck profile. I know a lot of these cards don't exist in TCGs just yet, but think about this as a bit of a preview to what is to come for this particular deck. Starting with like the lineup, we have Link Slayers, we have Clock Wyvern because it generates a token. We have Lady Debugger that's limited to one thanks to uh, Salamangrates. Now these guys don't exist. These are the Code Radiators. They are the water ones that you can use in hand for material. Then we have Cyrus Gadget, which also generates a token when he leaves the field, but this token's level two. The levels of these tokens do matter and they limit uh, what you can actually go into. We have Code Generator, which is the earth one that you can go, uh, go into a Code Talker from your hand. We have a light monster that you can just free summon. We have another light monster, which can be useful in the battle phase. We have a Link Flyer that is a wind monster that you can get a free summon out of in case you already use Clock Wyvern. Then we have Micro Code uh, Coder which is pretty nice. One dot scaper because you're going to throw things into the graveyard and one effect veiler just because I can. As for the lineup here, we have one for one because I need the one for one to get into the micro coder. Same with the where art thou. The tokens usually being level one gives you that access very quickly. And Silent Mining Triple just to increase the consistency. Foolish Burial because you can revive micro coder from the graveyard using Cyrus Gadget. Uh, call by the grave. Now this is another card that's interesting, Signet Optimize. You can use Signet Optimize to uh, give you a, the additional normal summon, but it does activate, it does put the monster onto the field right away as a part of the effect. And of course we have Signet Codec and we just have uh, the counter trap for Cyberus monsters and I guess infinite impermanence. So the, in terms of the, the extract lineup, we have of course Cyberus, we have the Crusadia, uh, I guess Avramax, Decode, Encode, Power code, shooting code, X code, double trans code, update jammer, inverted code, code regular code, which does not exist yet, and uh, talk back lancer, which is part of your link one series to your link Karibo. Why does this guy matter? Because you need a level two or lower cybers monster to go into him rather than just the level one. So that's why the levels do matter. Okay, so we're going to kick this combo off with, I guess, how to do it. First of all, you're going to need a couple of cards. This is at least a three card combo, which is why I don't think is competitively viable, but still very fun to perform. And once you get the combo going, it is still very annoying for a deck that just solely runs on monsters in the extra deck to perform their ultimate goal. So to how to do that, well, let's just activate some of the stuff that needs to activate. We're going to special summon out one of these Link Slayers, and we're going to normal summon out this code talker with that in mind why am i no normal summoning this when i can just use it in my hand well i want to save it so that my second copy can be used in the hand so the first monster we're going into is regular code talker at this point the direction doesn't matter because but once you start to go into the ones with attributes so you start from the left and then you go to the right so that's the direction you need to go so we're going to activate micro code talker or micro coder and then we're going to activate Sinet codec channeling on channeling two you can target the dark and then this one's going to get us a fetch. Now what we're going to fetch is... Now if you want to fetch something a bit more diverse, you can go with Code Radiator if you want to break a board. But in this case, it doesn't really matter. So I'm just going to fetch out uh, the Optimize. That is something that you have to get. Get the Sign and Optimize and get the Micro Coder. Now the search effects once per turn, so make sure you keep that in mind. Activated, this is your additional normal summon. And from here, you have things that you can use so we're just going to special summon out the next one because these guys can be used as material from your hand trans code talker to revive out the regular code talker and we're going to use the micro code talker again we're going to activate this i'm going to target the trans code talker and the card to add to your hand is code generator if you had the water one that'd be even better because you can actually save up a material next we're going to activate trans code talker's effect and revive the code talker since that's a link two and you are able to do so and once we get that done, now we have an additional material to play with. And that's the one that goes into the win one. And when we go into the win one, X code talker, we're going to activate three effects. And we're going to lock out the zone that your opponent is going to get off of your trans code talker. So you can kind of just work it backwards. You can put this usually as chain link uh, three, but if you get ogred, then your combo breaks. So maybe not so ideal. And the code generator, we're gonna toss into the graveyard the dotscaper. This is gonna block the zone, and now we're gonna search Clock Wyvern. If you already have used Clock Wyvern to set up your combo, then add the Link Infiltrator. 
so we're gonna summon out the dot scape because it got sent to the graveyard and now we're gonna need additional normal summons like oh no i can't normal but yeah you can you have optimize go ahead just normal out the clock wyvern in this particular corner because both of these zones are going to be used very soon so you don't want to block your zone so it has to be on the leftmost or the rightmost zone so you don't block yourself zoning absolutely matters in this case now use the two monsters right here to go into another exclusive in the ocg which is inverted code talker take the dot scaper and the token and summon it right here now you're going to change up your chain links now you're going to activate both of these effects but you want the codec to search first so you got to put this link monster as chain link one and then codec as chain link two so that you can add the lady debug and then summon lady debug now we're gonna summon it and then we get an additional plus because it has to summon onto an arrow that's why that matters a lot and we're gonna activate the effect now normally you could go for the the profit bit snake if you already have another monster to kind of special summon out but in this case you're not going to be able to so you're going to need the cyrus converter this guy is just a free summon if you control like all Cybers monsters. And since you're, you only control Cybers monsters, you can just special summon this guy out for free. Yeah, free summons are great. And in this case, now we're going to go into Update Jammer. That's pretty cool. And then we're going to go into Talk Back Lancer. I'm going to go right here. So now we perform the U-Board. But as I've mentioned before, that this whole U-Board isn't exactly the strongest thing ever. It's pretty easy to break. I mean, there's nothing really kind of forcing your opponent to hit your stuff. So in that case, uh, yeah, you can force your opponent to hit your stuff by going into an Avermax right here and leaving that right there. Oh, do you want to get the double attack? Ah, sure. Why not? And uh, well, there you have it. Your opponent is now stuck only attacking Avermax, which is uh, not something that's easy to do. Your opponent cannot target this card with card effects. Also, their monster cannot target monsters for attack except for this one. So they have to swing into this bad boy. So if they're only playing a monster based deck, this is going to kind of lock them out. If you have profit bit snake, that would make your board a little bit more secure if they try to swing into, if they ever break this board and they try to swing into something else, you could just bounce the card that's attacking. Yeah, that's a pretty decent play, but this is the kind of board that you're setting up. Like they don't get the extra zone. They're kind of crippled in their own way. And uh, that is the demo for you guys of how to do it. You can do it differently. You can put, usually if you have the two plays available and then you have uh, your first, uh, I guess, monster to play with, you can definitely go into like shooting code talker to get the water. And then you can get into a Link Karibo in here instead. That's just the possibility. This one actually lets you revive additional monsters as long as uh, it points to it. So. But you have to tribute other monsters, so I'm not going to do that. Like, if you activate this, yeah, you can get rid of one of your monsters, and then you can summon one back into, like, that position, which is a little bit awkward if you ask me. Like, oh, I'll get rid of this, and then I'll just summon this dude right here. But that's a complete waste. Don't do that. And that's all I got for this video, guys. If you guys enjoyed this video, smash the thumbs up button. If you guys learned something, if you, whether or not you want to play a deck similar to this, maybe this will be your, your side squeeze. This is your side bay. Um, well, give it a try, I suppose. It's kind of fun. You can try it online. And uh, if you want to see more stuff from MSD.TV, this is Lazy Thursday after all. This is something that I just kind of wanted to show you guys for fun. Uh, well, don't forget to hit the subscribe button. I got another ruling segment coming up very soon, and I'm going to get into the live duel. So I guess stay tuned for that. And until next time, I'll see you guys in the next one. Hey guys, thanks for watching. If you like this video, please drop us a like so we know we are doing a good job. And you can also subscribe to MSD.TV for more fantastic videos by clicking on the button on the left. Don't forget to check out our partners at Imperium Duelist. They make really high quality mats, including some of my own limited edition release stuff. And if you want to check out one of our past videos, click here on the right. As always, don't forget to hold on to your MST.TV and I'll see you next time.